Hey, it's Vass here from Aussie RC Playground and welcome to another unboxing. Today we're going to be looking at the ZD Racing Pirates 3. Now this is a 1.8 scale four-wheel drive brushless monster truck and this one is a ready to run. Now I got it from Banggood so feel free to check out the video description. I'll have a link in there for you uh, to go and check out some of the specs and some of the other information on this truck in case I've missed anything here. Uh, but of course if you've been following the channel you know that I've actually got the Pirates 2. I've actually ran that truck a couple of times but that one I got as a roller whilst this one is a ready to run and I decided to get the ready to run this time around because I kind of wanted to compare and get the full package to see what ZD Racing are actually doing as far as the electrics part of it goes. Now I can tell you straight away that with this truck there's already a few differences here that are a nice little improvement over the Pirates 2. They've got a wheelie bar on here, they have uh, some new wheels and some new tyres on here as well. There's also a bigger bump bar uh, that we'll be talking about. But unfortunately the body is still that sort of like real flimsy type of plastic body uh, that as soon as it bends or gets some damage it turns white. It looks like it's going to break any minute. Uh, so I'm a little bit concerned about that. And unfortunately I did have a bit of an issue with this truck as well. Um, which of course I've let a Banggood know about. Now I'm showing you the box here. The box is empty. The truck's no longer in here. Uh, but you can see that I've got damage to the box here. Um, if we flip the box around, you can see that there's actually a little bit of damage on the back of the box as well. And then on the edges here, this is what's left over of the packing that they used for this box. So when this box turned up at my house, it wasn't inside another box. Traditionally, when these, when I get sent these products, they're wrapped in another cardboard box to obviously offer some form of protection. This one just had a bit of a plastic bag wrapped around it and uh, this is how the box came. So uh, a little bit disappointed that uh, the box got some damage because that actually translated to some damage inside the actual truck itself. And uh, I'll show you that right now. Okay, so that's everything that you get in the box. You get the truck, the radio, of course, charger and manual with a couple of the bits and pieces here. So let's start with the charger. It is a very basic charger that charges via the balance leads here. Um, so it'll do a 2S or a 3S. And of course it comes with this European style plug uh, which of course you'll need an adapter for to use it here in Australia. Uh, the bag with the manual and everything else, we'll go through this very quickly. A couple of zip ties, whether or not you're going to need those, I don't know. Uh, these little things here, this is for the servo saver. So uh, the servo saver plugs in over the top of these and then um, on the back, depending on the type or brand of servo that you have. Some of them will have a 23, 24 or 25 spline and they give you these little adapters uh, in case you swap out servos. Uh, there's also a couple of bits of double-sided tape in here. I don't, I'm not sure what they're for but in case you need them at least you have them. Uh, and then of course the all-important user manual for the car. Uh, the user manual is actually not that bad. It has exploded views and it has parts listings for everything. It even goes by, um, you know, step by step on how to disassemble or reassemble the truck. And of course you get part numbers for everything. Uh, tells you some safety precautions, what tools you need, yada, yada, yada. The only thing that it doesn't have is information regarding the speed controller. So if you want to program the speed controller for whatever reason, unfortunately, um, there's no uh, instructions for that. The radio feels real cheap, very light, but it is a four channel radio, believe it or not. Uh, so of course you got steering and throttle, um, which I pointed it wrong, <laughs> that's throttle, that's steering. There's a third channel button here and a fourth channel button here that you can actually toggle. It's a three position switch. On and off switch up the top here, you have behind this little flipper door, if I can open it, um, you have a steering trim, throttle trim, which I think are the two top ones, and then you have steering and throttle dual rate on this side as well. And of course your reverse switch is just up there. Um, on the side there is a USB port. I'm not entirely sure what that's for. There's also a three and a half millimeter um, jack in here. Um, I don't think this is an MP3 player in disguise, so I don't know if you're gonna be listening to music or what that is for entirely, uh, but it's there. Runs on four double A's, uh, which of course are not included, and uh, that is pretty much it. The wheel doesn't feel too bad. Uh, it's plastic, it's not foam or anything, or even rubber, um, but hopefully the, you, know, you don't have range issues and it doesn't go all funny on you. Um, hopefully it'll work okay. So that's the radio. Now, for the main event, the truck itself, and there it is in all its glory. Truck actually doesn't look that bad, but see if you can spot what's wrong with it at the moment. Um, I don't have any 
front stickers for the for this body um, and there are definitely stickers shown in the box so um, or actually on the box so if i get the box here very quickly you can see that the truck actually has stickers a grill and some headlights and mine clearly does not so they did not include stickers they weren't stuck on and they were not supplied separately which is very strange the body itself because of the damage on uh, you know to the box you can see it's got all these white markings it's got damaged here as well um, now this is not a big deal i don't mind this this is annoying yes yeah, especially when you buy a new product but let's face the facts the body the body is going to get destroyed um, you, you might complain about it and say that oh you know it's obviously been damaged in transport, but the fact that um, you know, you're gonna end up damaging the body anyway, uh, it's, you're kind of like, why are you really complaining about it? Um, that being said, the fact that it didn't have stickers, that's a little bit annoying. Um, even though, yeah, same reason, you're gonna rip them off probably um, during your bashing. Um, and a lot of people probably wouldn't even care about that and probably wouldn't even notice. But that's issue number one that I had. The biggest issue, however, that I had with this, with this truck when I took it out of the box was that my wheelie bar was actually broken. So I'm going to show you uh, what actually broke, if I can find it here. Uh, this piece of the wheelie bar had actually snapped off during transport and these are the bits that were rolling around inside the box. So I uh, contacted uh, Banggood and um, you know, despite the fact that yes, this was sent out to me for review, um, I asked them, you know, what if I was a paying customer? How would you treat this? And um, the answer was, well, we'll replace the wheelie bar and of course replace the body. So they did that. Um, <clears throat> I got a new wheelie bar, which I fixed and they sent me out a new body. However, the new body um, didn't quite turn up in mint condition either. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what they actually did, at least I got stickers, so that's a bonus. Uh, what they did is they wrapped this in a bit of foam. They had the wheelie bar kind of in there like so, and then they put all of it into a bag and shipped it out like that. Of course, during transportation with heat and so forth, you can see that the body is actually bent inwards. There's also some damage here. You can see that it's not straight at the back. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, they tried to fix one problem and instead they created another. So I do give them props for you know doing the right thing and uh, sending out uh, a new body and a new wheelie bar. Uh, wheelie bar, but unfortunately, they really need to improve on their on their packing and I know I'm not the only one to complain about that and as I said I have told them about it they are fully aware uh, so what I'm telling you here is not going to be news to them I'm sure uh, but I do applaud them for trying to do the right thing I think they just need to just tidy up a little bit just refine things a little bit and I think they'll have um, a lot more happier customers so let's take this off these little washers, um, <clears throat> they're kind of cool because they do protect the body, but they're aluminium. And um, a lot of the times you end up losing these if you're not careful because you can't really sort of put zip ties on them. You, I use magnets to hold my body pins on my bodies as you, I'm sure you've seen before. They don't magnetize. So you gotta be really careful not to lose these little washers. They're a little bit annoying. All right, so the body feels very much like the uh, Pirates 2. And uh, as you can see, you know, when it flexes and bends, it has this sort of like, leaves this sort of like white marks, which really is very questionable about the uh, durability. Uh, inside, uh, it's a little bit of a familiar sight, but there are some differences here, which are kind of cool. I don't mind the motor. The motor actually looks pretty beefy. It's a decent sized motor. The ESC, I'm not really sure how this is going to go, um, but the ESC is uh, questionable somewhat. Um, and uh, everything else is very much the same. Now, the front bumper, that's a nice little addition. The, v, uh, the V2, I suppose the Pirates 2, only had a very tiny little bumper on the front here, which is kind of like what you'd see on a buggy, not so much a monster truck. Uh, body posts and everything have a little bit of flex to them, so they're not too bad. Uh, center diff at least wasn't uh, leaking this time, so that's a bonus. Uh, the wheelie bar is actually ball bearings. It's got ball bearings on it, so that's a nice little bonus there as well. Suspension wise, probably a little bit light in the front, but at the rear actually feels kind of nice. Uh, maybe a little bit stiff to be honest, but it's not bad. It's not bad for what it is. Uh, these tires, 
<laughs> um, very chunky rubber on these guys and uh, a very aggressive tread pattern on here as well. So I think for loose dirt, muddy terrain, these are going to these are going to be awesome, absolutely awesome. I don't know how they're going to go on gravel though, because that's what the BMX track is mainly made up of. Um, you know, on grass, I think they could actually be okay. They actually feel kind of soft, um, so they're not too bad. <clears throat> but I'm not sure how they're going to fare on gravel. Uh, the plastics on this uh, are still a little questionable for me. They don't have a lot of shine to them. They feel you know a little bit dull. And uh, you can just feel that there's, they're really, really hard and they could pretty much snap uh, at any time. Um, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. They don't give you an, an antenna tube either. Um, you know, instead of giving me zip ties, you know, why not provide a little antenna tube? So I've got to get my own and uh, set this up for the antenna. Um, we'll get the battery out of here and I'll show you this guy. Um, not a bad size. Um, I don't mind the size of this battery, uh, but there's no writing on it. And I actually had to go on the website to find out how many milliamps is this thing supposed to be. It does have Dean's plugs on here, which I'm going to be cutting off pretty much straight away. Um, I'll use um, XT150s for this guy, like I do with most of my other rigs. Um, and I believe that this can run on 4S. Now, <clears throat> this battery tray looks to be the same as the previous one, which means I'm not going to be able to fit a standard 4S battery in here. Um, all they need to do, quite honestly, is make this battery tray about five, mil, five millimeters longer in length, <clears throat> and all, all is good. Um, but doing it this way, I'm gonna have to cut the back of it out again, like I did on the Pirates 2, in order to fit a standard battery in here. And then I'll put a, a strip of Velcro on the bottom uh, so that my battery can stick on there and it doesn't slide around. It doesn't slide off the tray and you know hit the posts and so forth. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty much everything, really. Chassis seems to be very nice. Um, I do recommend you go through some of these screws and uh, Loctite some of them. Uh, double check that they are actually tight, uh, properly tight on here. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully won't have anything go wrong with this one. But I am I'm curious to see how this one's gonna go. I'm, I'm expecting you know, with the wheelie bar and everything, um, and of course the bigger bumper at the front, that this is actually going to take perhaps a little bit more abuse. Uh, the bigger wheels and tires are an interesting addition. I'm curious to see what the servo is going to be like. I have a sneaky suspicion I'm probably going to have to upgrade the servo uh, because there's no labeling on the servo whatsoever, so I don't even know um, how, what's the torque rating of this thing. Um, again, you might need to go and check out the uh, website to see um, all these sort of like little specs uh, to give you an idea of whether or not this truck is uh, worth you spending your money on. These sort of trucks, if I can just finalize this, uh, these short, uh, sort of trucks are very appealing for somebody that's on a little bit of a budget. If you don't wanna go and spend out the big dollars on brands, uh, you know, big branded uh, products, I can understand the appeal of these smaller trucks um, and people go, well, you know, I'll save a bit of myself a bit of money. I have a nice truck. Uh, it looks pretty beefy and pretty big, you know, for the same money I'll buy something local like a 10 scale. So I've gone a little bit bigger and I understand the appeal. The issue with these sort of trucks is number one is of course durability. Uh, you know, you're probably gonna end up having a few more issues than you would with the, na with the name brand. And of course, part support. Where are you going to get parts from? You can't just walk into your local hobby shop and expect these trucks to be on the shelf and for them to have a wall full of parts. That's not always the case. Maybe in certain parts of the world, you might get lucky and you might have somebody that has them, but uh, not here. So you need to be prepared that when you are buying something like this, that part support uh, needs to be crucial and a lot of it you're going to be doing online. Um, so hopefully Banggood are you know, stocked up on parts. Uh, so if something does go wrong, I'm at least able to um, you know, get the replacements if I need to buy them or if they need to send them to me or whatever the case may be. Um, hopefully that gets sorted. But you know what? The Pirates 2 has actually done exceptionally well with the exception of the uh, broken wheel um, and the fact that I had to rebuild uh, my diffs at the start. All that being said, the truck's actually doing not too bad. There's a couple of other issues that I will be talking about come review time, and I'm gonna see if this one was going to experience the same problems or not. Um, and then maybe I'll review both of them at once uh, when the time comes and I actually put a couple of runs through this guy. But for now, I'm gonna leave this video here, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. If you uh, hang on, hung on until this time of the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. 
Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And as always, check out the video description for uh, links to the uh, truck itself, as well as links to my social media pages. I thank you again for watching, and I'll be speaking to you all next time.